Beginning with lesson 11 and going through lesson 18, we are going to transition into studying the third article of the Apostles' Creed, which will focus us on the work of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see that the Holy Spirit's work is wide-reaching, but also it's kind of subtle and it's behind the scenes. Our next several lessons will deal with things that may not look super impressive on the outside, but are actually incredibly powerful. In class, we will begin by reading the account of the first Christian Pentecost day, where 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven, Peter and the other disciples were given many gifts by the Holy Spirit so that they could share God's word with many people in that place. In fact, 3,000 people came to believe. They were given faith that Jesus is their savior. And that concept of faith is what we want to focus on for this lesson. What is faith and where does it come from? Many people have many different ideas about what faith is, but will use God's definition rather than other people's ideas about faith. The writer to the Hebrews put it this way. He said in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Faith is being sure about what we hope for, being convinced about things we do not see. Faith is trusting the promises of God. Faith is depending on what God has said and done. Faith is something that God gives to us to be able to trust that what he says is true. We can define faith this way. Faith. Trusting God's promises are true for us and all people. Faith. Trusting God's promises are true for us and all people. Faith is important and necessary, but it's not something that we can just decide to have. We can't make ourselves believe God gives us faith to trust his promises, and he uses specific tools to do that. When the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, he said this, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message comes through the word of Christ. God gives us faith through the message of the gospel. We connect with the gospel through what we call the means of grace, or the ways that God brings his grace to us. The means of grace are like water pipes that bring water to your house. The pipes don't quench your thirst, but they bring the water that does. So too, the means of grace bring God's forgiveness. And those means are God's word and the sacraments, where the gospel is present. We can define the means of grace this way. The gospel in word and sacrament. With those, the Holy Spirit creates and strengthens faith. Means of grace. The gospel in word and sacrament. With those, the Holy Spirit creates and strengthens faith. This is why it is so important for us to stay connected to God's word at home and at church, and why you're working toward being able to receive one of the sacraments, the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, because these are the ways that God keeps our faith strong. Now we will talk in much more detail about the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper in lessons 13 through 16, but for right now, let's define a sacrament this way. Sacrament. A sacred act that, one, was started by Jesus, two, connects an earthly element with God's word, three, offers the forgiveness of sins. Sacrament. A sacred act that, one, was started by Jesus, two, connects an earthly element with God's word, and three, offers the forgiveness of sins. When God creates faith in our hearts, we benefit from the work that he's done for us. We said in Lesson 9 that when Jesus died, he paid for the sins of the whole world. That's a universal reality. It is an objective truth that the debt of sin has been paid. It's been done. It's been accomplished. However, people benefit from that by trusting in Jesus as Savior. Someone who doesn't believe, someone who doesn't have faith that trusts God's promises, does not benefit from Jesus' work. 
And we call God working faith in our hearts to trust that Jesus took away our sins personal or subjective justification. We could define that this way, personal, subjective justification. We receive Jesus' forgiveness through faith. When the Holy Spirit creates faith, what Jesus did for the world becomes ours. Personal or subjective justification. We receive Jesus' forgiveness through faith. When the Holy Spirit creates faith, what Jesus did for the world becomes ours. In class, we'll talk more about how the Holy Spirit works to create and strengthen faith in our hearts. I look forward to studying this more with you together. God bless your week.